Hey guys, welcome back to our Texas Homestead. Today we're gonna to be talking about electrolysis tanks. I'll bring you in and take a look at it here in a minute. For those of you who don't know about electrolysis tanks, what they do, they remove rust. Rust from tools, rust from cast iron, rust from almost any type of metal. They will not remove it from aluminum. It's actually a very corrosive and destructive method to destroy aluminum. A uh, few things you need to do an electrolysis tank. The main chemical that you're going to use is, of course, water. The second thing you have to have is soap. The main thing you're looking for in these is one, the Arm & Hammer is supposed to be the best one, the super washing soda, and you're looking for sodium carbonate. That's, what, that's the active ingredient, ingredient inside of the uh, washing soda that activates the tank plus electricity to do it. Um, one thing that you're going to learn is if you use an electrolysis tank, you'll get foam on top of it that looks white, it looks like rust. If you're cleaning a piece of cast iron, like a pan that has a bunch of seasoning on it, like this one has a ton, the seasoning will actually come off and make it look black. But what you see in all those little bubbles is hydrogen. So always watch out for sparks, watch out for any kind of flame near your electrolysis tank because that can actually put everything on the walls for you. And you have to repaint everything so that it's anywhere near. So let's get you in, we'll take a look at the tank and see what we've got. Okay, electrolysis tank, they're pretty simple. This tank here was from a car wash. We got it for 10 bucks and was able to just cut a hole in it and add two 16 gauge welding plates inside the tank. And now, after that, of course, here's your bolts all the way around it. And they're all connected with a power wire. Your power wire goes to your plates, your ground wire will go to whatever piece of metal you've got in your tank. If you reverse that, all the rusts and everything that's in your tank, it's like if you've done five, six, 10 pieces of cast iron, that all that rust would go towards your cast iron piece instead of away towards the plates. The plates are your sacrificial anod anodes that are designed to be worn and wear and tear I just cleaned mine off uh, as best I could to start up a new start up a new mixture. Uh, you can see, as I said, you can use it on tools. These are all rolled and rusted and completely black. Things you do have to watch out for is like little pieces like this. This little piece here tested positive for lead. So. If you get lead in your tank, you have to clean it out and get anything outside of it that may transfer it. You can clean your plates. It's not gonna be enough lead on your plates to transfer it over into a new piece, typically, unless you have something that's just a huge piece with a bunch of lead in it. Um, so basically now we're gonna start refilling the tank back up. tank itself will hold approximately 23 gallons of water to the level I've got to put it at. It is a 30 gallon tank. And we'll, as soon as I get the tank full, we'll get back and show you how to set it up. All right, after what felt like an eternity to get this thing filled back up, I'm gonna recommend a couple of things to you. If you're doing cast iron, I do highly recommend some kind of lead checker. This one right here is by Tony Lab. You can actually dip it in your water. I know you can't see this, but you can see the color. It's still nice and mustard colored, as they call it. If you're looking to see if it's got lead, mustard here is none, and over here, or any kind of dark color, is no lead. And it is with lead. As I told you earlier, this little, cold, this little sugar cauldron, when you test it, It's 
supposed to rub it for 30 seconds, I do believe. Comes out with a nice red tint to it to show you that it actually does have lead. The um, cauldron, the water itself, after I cleaned it, does not have lead in it because I was actually able to dip my Q-tip into the water and prove that my tank itself was clean. Now, for your laundry soap or your super washing soda, okay? If you, if you go online, you read and really go through it and you see everybody will tell you something different. I'll tell you what's worked for me. I've seen anything from a half a teaspoon, a tablespoon and a half, a third of a, t of a cup, a half a cup, a whole cup per five gallons. All of those were per five gallons. What works for me per five gallons is half a cup. You just dump it in. I've got approximately 23 gallons in here. So just uh, crazy math would be four half a cups and we'll call it a third. A little overfill. Now, if you get a lot of extra in there and it spills over your cup, it's not going to hurt it. While you're running your tank and it's going throughout your, you know, while you're doing multiple different things in it, it's fine if you have to add a little more to it. You're not getting the, the foam that you want on top, of, on top of the tank. You don't think it's cleaning like it should. Add some. I just use a stick, stir it up a little bit just to make sure that my mix is mixed up. A lot of times I truly add it while I'm adding water to the tank so that way I know for a fact it's not all just sitting on the bottom. But for you, to be able to demonstrate it to y'all and tell you how much I actually use, I wanted to be able to do it at the end. Now, you have to have something to hold your whatever you're going to put into your tank. A lot of people use a two by four. This is a one by three, four. Use something with steel. Do not use aluminum. Make sure your hooks are not aluminum. If you have to, get a magnet. Make sure these are correct. You can also get a magnet. It's like if you're curious if a Magnolite pot is magnetic. It's not. Magnesium and aluminum. This is made by Wagner. So, the piece we're going to try this time, I haven't done one like this in a while, is this rusty lodge pan. Nice, big pan, tons of rust. What I recommend to you to help your tank out is to come in, clean out as much loose brush as you can get. If not, the tank's just going to pull it right to your sacrificial anodes, and you're just going to... Build them up with a bunch of trash right off the bat. Why take the time to clean your tank, do everything you got to do, and put something in that you know you can just easily wipe, wipe a bunch of it off. So I'm going to pull you in here real quick. I'm going to get uh, my son here to hold, hold the camera and show you how to put everything in and how to load it up. All right. Can you see this one right here? Okay, this is one of my electrodes that I have my wires connected to. I use a wing nut to help grab my connectors. I have one over here just like it. it takes an alligator clip, connect it. What I use is an actual DC unit. A lot of people will use a manual car battery charger. They pretty much do the same. This I feel you, you have a lot more control over because you're actually able to set the wattage, the voltage, everything like what you want. Uh, voltage, from what I understand, doesn't mean a whole lot when you're doing this. It's all more about amperage. So basically, I actually changed my hook out for a larger hook because of the size of the pan and the weight.
this one. I'm gonna have to go right at an angle. There we go. All right, this one's gonna sit near the bottom, it looks like. So what I can do is adjust up. I have two of these, so I'm gonna take a, take a break for a second. I'm gonna adjust, I'm gonna change these out. Okay, move to a shorter eye bolt. Still had to lengthen it down a little bit, so that way every bit of the pan is actually in the tank. Okay, so now you take your ground, if you hook it here, which you can, it will actually work. And then it, but you lose amperage and voltage and everything as you're going through the, through the eye bolt. I always take my cord, wrap it over here. So that way I don't have to worry about it ever hitting one of the sacrificial anodes, but I actually attach them directly to the pan, the skillet, the pot, whatever I'm hooking it into, it goes direct. Now, turn it on. See, currently I've got it set for 10 amps and 21 volts. This will go as high as 31 and 10. Wattage, it's gonna be whatever wattage it needs to start working on this pan, okay? Got that set, just hit output, okay? With the amount of rust on it, which I may actually go and have to clean an edge to help break it, to get my amperage up. If I leave it and just let it run like this, it will still typically break through. Sometimes you're able to boost it up and it'll break through on its own. So what I'm gonna try to do is come in and clean it up a little bit and see how much better it gets. All right, always turn your power off before you start touching your plate, moving anything, always have the power off. Because if you create an arc or anything, as I said, it's hydrogen. Typically you want this done in a well-ventilated area. This is done in my garage. It's a good sized garage that leaves me a lot of airflow. I do have a window right here also. Also, when you have your skillet in or whatever you have in, make sure it's not touching your sacrificial anodes inside, which can ground out. Let's see if that actually helped any. There we go. See, now I'm back down to 15 watts. It's what it's asking to pull, but I'm at full 10 amps. And right now it's pulling 160 watts. So 16 volts, 10 amps, 163 watts, which is actually quite a bit. It will tone itself down the more the pan gets clean that I've noticed. I've actually seen this drop down to 40 and it'll start pulling this down to five and my, my actual voltage will pretty much stay. So I'll continue this video here soon. I'm gonna give it some time in the tank. Uh, time in tank, this is more up to you. How clean do you want your, how clean do you want your pans? Do you want it, um, do you want it where it's gonna look practically brand new and you just gotta go in and season it and be able to cook on it? Or if, it's, if, you want, if you're doing that, you're looking 24, 48 hours in, in an e-tank. If you wanna help it along, which I do, one, it saves my plate, saves my electricity, saves time, you know, a little bit of time. It costs me a little bit more in material because either I'm having to use steel wool or something to start cleaning it up a little bit. But what I'm trying to do is go in and knock off the loose seasoning, going to knock off the loose rust after it starts doing its process, okay? That's my goal. I wanna help it along so that way it helps me along. I'm gonna get you in here and take a look at the tank a little bit so you can kind of see what it's doing. And if you notice, you'll see a little swirling action right here, right around the where it's at, you already see a little bit of foam coming in. And uh, we'll kind of let you all sit here and watch it for a little bit.
All right, we're back. We're about an hour and a half, two hours in. Uh, first set of cleaning on it. We're gonna pull it, take it over to my sink and kind of see where we're at and see if we need to clean anything off. Go ahead, be sure you shut your power down on your unit so that way nothing happens, no sparks, no anything. All right. After an hour and a half or so, this is where we're at. Let's bring it down over by the sink. Okay. Glo I wear gloves when I'm doing mine for one. It keeps everything out from underneath the fingernails. The little nitro gloves, these are five mil nitro gloves. These tear very, very easily. You'll get everything in the world underneath the fingernails. Nice little warm water mixture. When you get down to your final stage, you kind of want to use just cold water. I always add just a little bit of Dawn. That way I'm a... Uh, no, I'm not hurting the pan too bad with just straight steel wool. And let's kind of see, you can see everything's just already starting to fall off. Give you a good idea on how this pan's going to turn out. It may be too pitted to do anything with, or it may just have little pits in it. And if it's got little pits, you can always season those out and still have a good pan to cook on. I would not go in there and use your wife's nice clean sink if I were you. I added this little bit of wood to my area here so I have a little more of a workspace. But as I said, I do go in and help my electrolysis tank out. You don't have to. The tank itself will do it all. Um, I do it mainly so I don't have to clean it up as much. I get to go a lot longer in between, you know, cleaning my tank. And to clean the, uh, the steel or the anodes that you have in it, it's minor straight plate like that, I use just a regular, like a paint scraper. Just to give you a good idea. You can see this pan's actually gonna turn out what looks to be pretty nice. Not much pitting. And this isn't an old lodge or anything. It's a, it's a newer, it's still got the new, it's got the newer logo. Um, if you're just getting into cast iron, I mean, there's a lot of pans out there that are worth quite a bit of money. This depends on a, uh, what you want to pay these i got out of an estate sale 
And I got several pans when I bought it. Some nice Griswold, some Wagner, and some Lodge. I even got a few Dutch, uh, Dutch ovens. I got a Wagwald Dutch oven and a Lodge and a Griswold. But you can see guys, the Lake Charles' tank does the bulk of the work for you. Now if you got a pan that has a ton of seasoning on it and you run it through your electrolysis tank and it doesn't all want to come off like this, you can see it there, you can see a lot of the seasoning. Um, you have a couple choices. One, you can keep running it through until it breaks it all down and takes it off. If you have a pan with just straight seasoning on it, you can put it in your oven, run a cleaning cycle on your oven, and it will take all the seasoning off your pans. It typically will leave a little bit of surface rust on it. All you got to do then is run it right back through your electrolysis tank. That's the best way to get those off. If you don't have an electrolysis tank, Quad Zero Steel Wool is your friend when you're trying to clean up cast iron. Okay. Um, you can also do a lye tank, a lye bath. Um, one pound of lye per five gallons of water. It'll take off all your seasoning. You can leave a pan in lye for years and it won't hurt the pan. It won't hurt the pan, excuse me. Um, if you use vinegar, vinegar can and will hurt the cast iron. It will eat it away. So I don't recommend using vinegar on it. Every time I've ever had to use vinegar on a pan, I, when I was first messing with them, I would automatically get a flash rust on my pans. Flash rust is after you get it clean and get it dried, it's like you see this haze of rust start coming back on your pan. So never had any real good luck with the, uh, the vinegar. It does clean good, it will do it. Um, I have done it, but I personally, after I've built my tank and everything, I, I won't ever do it again. Live bath, you can leave it in forever. Even with electrolysis tank, a lot of people, if you're, if you're using their garage or whatever, they don't want to, and they, and they wanna shut everything down so that way it's all enclosed. They don't let it run overnight. That's how I do it. I don't let mine run overnight. It does not hurt the pan, does not create rust if you just leave the pan in your tank. It'll sit here just like this and be just fine. Um, I come out, I usually come out first thing as soon as I get up, get a shower, come out, turn my tank on, and open up my garage door so that way it all uh, gets started and keeps going. Typically, me personally, I run most of mine for average four to eight hours. And I get pans out that look brand new when I'm done especially after seasoning and everything else. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna shut this down for the night, get up in the morning, turn it back on, and we'll continue the video then. And we'll see what this pan turns into when it's all said and done. We'll keep this one going. See y'all again here soon. And All right, and we're back. It's been about an hour. And I'm going to take a look at this thing and get it out of the, the tank. And 
that's what it looks like, folks. Send it in, ran it through the, through the oven. It's the way I like to do mine, especially when I got that deep seasoning in them. Then run it through the heat tank, get all the, the new rust off of it. Don't get me wrong, every one of them rust different. Some of them will have a lot of rust on them, like this one did after you get it through the oven. Some of them will have just a little bit. But this one I do believe cleaned up very nice, especially for a pan that was that rusted. One thing you will get left on pans, these old, this newer lodge stuff to me is harder to see it on, is black iron. All right. This one we're gonna fight. This one's gonna be a fight. This one's gonna want a flash rust. I just had another pan that did the exact same thing. The blackness that's coming off of it is black iron. It's black oxide. It's uh, black rust, which is fine. Red rust is what's, what you're trying to avoid. this one is bad it's trying it is trying you can see here it's getting a little orange hue to it I'm not sure you can see it in the camera getting a little orange hue to it where it's trying to rust so let me go uh, I'll just use I'll just use that for now I don't usually use it so let me grab a pen I don't think all that rust that just came off was new. Tell you here in a minute. I think a lot of that was just left in the pad. Grab a fresh one. He's got some. Okay, this was a super rusted pan. So. Everyone's going to disagree on how to handle a flash rusting pan. Okay? Let me try to get you in here a little closer. Just flip on another light for you. Everybody's going to tell you something different, okay? I do it my way. It's what works for me. It may work for you. It may not. But the cast iron community, the fickle, fickle group. But you do what works for you. Don't let anybody else tell you how to do it. And I'm happy with that. I don't usually use vegetable oil, but I just happen to have some out here because I was cooking stir fry and making this. Yeah, 
that looks a lot better. Just needed a little more scrubbing around that edge, I think, was, was the main pro, main culprit. So, if you get one that's flash rusted, yes, they tell you to take it in, put it on the stove. Actually, just normally, they tell you to make sure there's no moisture in your pan before you season it. Go put it on the stove, heat it up, then add your oil. No, it doesn't work. It, it works. It does work for pans that don't want to flash rust. But not every pan's that nice. My last two have not been nice. No, I usually don't use this much oil, but it is a huge pan. And all I'm trying to do, is stop it from rusting. Now when you're seasoning pans, whatever oil you put on them has to come off. Every bit. Can't leave any oil on a pan. You want to take it off like it's not supposed to be there. Okay. So come in. And literally wipe it like it is not supposed to be on the pan. The pan will pull in its own amount of oil that it needs, and you season off of that. Okay? No more, no less. I usually wear gloves when I'm doing this, but didn't really have time to put on a pair of nitro gloves. All right, this pan is ready to be seasoned. How I season my pans may be different than how you've been told, how you do it. As I said, everybody's different. Everybody works different. I put mine in the oven upside down. So it's going to sit in the oven just like this. 400 degrees for 45 minutes. Some people tell you 450. Some people tell you 425 for an hour. Some people tell you 500 for an hour or 500 for 30 minutes. All you're doing is heating the oil up and getting it to bake onto the pan. As long as you pull it out and it's not sticky after it cools, it's perfect. Everybody's oven also cooks differently. So you can't go off what they're telling you on temperature. Your oven may cook at a higher temperature. It may be more insulated or less insulated. You got to do what works for you. This is what works for me. So as you can tell, no rust. Y'all remember how rusty this pan was. This thing was a monster of rust. It was just nothing but rust. I think the pan came out great. It'd be a great cooking pan. It sits absolutely flat. So, check out my video on stove, um, Stove cleaning restoration, I believe it's what it's called. Uh, and it'll show you how I, you know, how I season my pans. I'm gonna, it, it, you go in and put them in, you do it six times. That's it. Six times is it's how I do my pans. 400 degrees, upside down. I use grapeseed oil. I don't typically use vegetable oil. I use that in a hurry up and get something on it so it doesn't rust but other than that it's 
pretty simple. Showed you how to make an e-tank. Um, lye bath, as I said, one pound of lye for five gallons. Don't get it anywhere near anything. That stuff will eat your eyes, it'll eat your skin. Uh, I don't do lye where I'm at because I'm on a well, I'm on well water. I'm not going to contaminate my well by trying to dump out lye or dump lye in the ground. If you live on well water, I don't recommend you use lye. I recommend you make you an e-tank or use your oven. I've even seen people throw these in, you know, in an open fire and get the same result. Gonna have all the rust. You gotta scrape all the, get all the rust off of it after after it's done. But you get all the seasoning done. May over temperature it because an open fire is pretty hot. So, if you got questions, type them in the box. I'll answer everything I can answer. I'm sure there's stuff that I missed or stuff you've got questions on. Everybody struggles here, there, everywhere on little different things. But as I said, watch the, watch the stove, you know, I'm trying to think, the, the self-cleaning oven um, cast iron restoration. That's what it's called. Um, I do that and I show you, and I, after I'm done with it, I go in and restore, I mean, I go in and season my pans. You'll see the first season, the second seasoning, and then the sixth seasoning. And you see how they turn out. So, and this one, and this one's featured in that one too because it's in the oven. It's, that's when this one's in the oven getting baked. So, guys, girls, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you got questions, ask. Be more than happy to try to help. Sorry, I try to keep my cars out of the out of the picture. But uh, it, it, it's it's an easy process, but it's confusing because there's so many different people telling you what to do. So, I'm here to help. I will see you next time on our Texas Homestead. Thanks.